Yes, the budget is done and now we are back to tracking central bankers. The US Federal Reserve is signaling disinflation has begun. How will this impact the Reserve Bank's Monetary Policy Committee meeting? As always, CNBC TV 18 Citizens Monetary Policy Committee meets to discuss whether or should the Reserve Bank hike rates. Joining me now are Chairman Pranab Sen and members of our committee, Sarmina Chakravarti of City, Swami Kanti Ghosh of State Bank of India, Sonal Verma of Nomura and Sajid Chinoy of JP Morgan. Gentlemen and Sonal, thank you very much for joining me. Well, since the backdrop is the Federal Reserve, uh, Sajid, let me start with that. Uh, the Federal Reserve is signaling disinflation uh, has begun and it's a small, only 25 basis hike that we got from them. The ECB and the BOE are still hawkish. So should the MPC still worry that uh, the global banks are hiking and so we can't pause? Now, that, since we last met, you know, the odds of a soft landing in 2023 have actually increased. Uh, the IMF, for example, still expects growth to slow in 23, but less than what was presumed a couple of months ago. A lot of this is because China has reopened faster. The data flow in Europe has been better than was expected. So on the margin, markets are more hopeful that growth, the slowdown will be less. Uh, you know, we've begun to see the disinflation. We're heading towards some kind of soft landing. But paradoxically, this actually makes the job of emerging market central bankers harder. Why is that? Because A, you will still see a slowdown. The IMF still expects global growth to go from, you know, 3.4 to 2.9 this year, which is a full percentage point below long-term global growth average. And because you will get a, a, a soft landing and not a harder landing, it is more likely that uh, advanced economy central banks will be higher for longer and make a type one error. Uh, if you look closely at what Chairman Powell said, he said they need to see evidence of substantially more disinflation, number one. And number two, they'd rather be in a situation where they do too much than do too little. Both the ECB and the Bank of England were actually very hawkish. So from an emerging market central banker's perspective, this is a difficult combination because you know growth is going to slow and that will impact India. But at the same time, despite the fact that there is global disinflation, it may not be enough uh, to uh, assuage advanced economy central banks. And therefore, the Fed will keep moving. We think there are at least two more hikes coming. The ECB has clearly said another 50 basis points and then more. The Bank of England has more work to do. And more importantly, it's not that when they, when they raise rates that you see a cutting cycle soon. You will see elevated rates for some length of time. And this makes the RBI's job a little bit harder because global financial conditions will remain tight even as the global economy is slowing. Oh, okay. So it'll be a little tough to blink and say I'm going soft when uh, global central banks are sounding hawkish. But uh, Samiran, what about the Indian external of uh, uh, grammar itself? I mean, we do have a, a current account deficit. The last number is 4.4. And this year we could end badly. Uh, you know, we could end above 3%. So do you think the RBI needs to persist with hikes to slow down imports? So, Lata, in our view, there are some uh, sort of unexpected uh, good news on the current account front, not so much from the goods trade side, but more from the services trade side. And that prompted us to reduce our current account deficit forecast for the current fiscal year as well as for next fiscal year. So, we are now at 2.2% of current account deficit for next fiscal year. Okay. Uh, now, 2.2% is still $85 billion of current account deficit. And that means uh, we require $85 billion of flow just to match the BOP, which in a year, if global dollar liquidity gets tightened, it's not going to be an easy thing to do. Uh, so my point is that the RBI cannot take its eyes off this issue. And while we accept that the December quarter BOP might have turned positive, mm -hmm. What we are witnessing in January, these sporadic bouts of portfolio outflows, etc., it immediately makes the INR almost the worst performing currency in the EM space in the month of January. Uh, so, in some sense, uh, if we don't stay along with the rest of the central banks, this problem can persist for longer elevated by tight global liquidity and idiosyncratic shocks. So even with a much more benign current account deficit forecast, I think this is a factor which the monetary policy cannot completely ignore.
Okay. Well, uh, the year-to-date uh, performance of the rupee versus Asian peers will hopefully come up for you. And uh, this is a quarter where rupee should do well. It's yeah. normally a time when export inflows come in. Our, uh, we have 0.75, uh, uh, you know, appreciated vis-a-vis -vis the dollar. But all other currencies have appreciated 2 to 4%. So we are clear underperformers. But um, uh, deficit, I mean, let's not forget we have this big... Uh, uh, budget uh, just behind us and one of its uh, uh, excellent performance has been on the fiscal deficit front it has got all around praise so Shomyo on that if the fiscal is tightening and we have a slowing economy should the RBI also persist with slowing the economy can they pause yeah thank you Latana I think that's a very relevant question because uh, all through the pandemic we have seen that the monetary and uh, fiscal policy have worked in coordination so uh, whatever actions the fisc, uh, the monetary has taken, the fisc has supported it. Now the question comes is that the fisc is actually uh, uh, d decided to go on its path of fiscal consolidation. Uh, uh, borrowing numbers are in line with market expectation, are in fact lower than the market expectation, slightly lower. And given the fact that the, uh, I mean, uh, as Shomiran pointed out, rupee disturbances, but my sense is that it is also has to do with the RBI significantly recouping forex reserves. Forex reserves now almost recoup more than 60% yes. of the lows. So that could be one of the factors which is holding back and rupee appreciation. But the limited fact is that in an economy uh, where Fed is also slowing the rate hikes, possibly Fed could do another rate hike but of the same no, magnitude. My point is the yes. borrowing. I, I, I mean, wanted your view on the borrowing program. The borrowing program is a little more controlled, you know, at 15 and a half. So, you know, can the Reserve Bank... Yes. Uh, so, basically, if you specifically look into the borrowing program, I think if you look into the composition of the GSEC program, the RBI and the, the central, sorry, the banks and the insurance companies subscribe around 60% of the overall pie. Now, in an economy uh, whereby uh, in the next year, if we actually look into the question of the subscription, it is possible that every time the banks or the insurance companies may not have the appetite okay. to subscribe to the 60% of the overall pie, even though the pie could have, may not have got significantly earlier. So, if you just do a small dipstick estimates, I think there could be still a shortfall around okay. 2 to 2.5 trillion of amount of GSEC which has to be taken out from the market by somebody else rather than the marketplace. So, I mean the central bank. So, in that case, I think some sort of a liquidity support could be required because we know, know that in because of an HTM and not adequate HTM space given the fact that also the appetite of the mm. borrowing which has happened last year for the insurance companies that may not remain this time. Oh. So, under such a circumstances, I am not sure whether then continued uh, policy tightening or liquidity tightening could help the cause of the markets even though uh, given the fact that inflation is coming under control. Okay, sorry, I think I have asked two questions in one. One is the growth support and one is the borrowing support. We'll uh, discuss the liquidity again. But let me come to the core problem of uh, the Reserve Bank and the MPC, the inflation targeting. Uh, 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 Sonal, on that, I mean, inflation has actually come in lower than expected for both the months of November and December. So for April, uh, for October, November, December, it's below what uh, Reserve Bank forecast. So do you think the Reserve Bank can relax a bit? And anyway, there's disinflation in other economies as well. The It's definitely a positive, uh, Lata, the headline coming down. Uh, but the details, of course, show that it's... Uh, the more volatile uh, components of inflation like vegetables which have driven this. Uh, the core basket uh, on aggregate uh, is uh, still sticky, uh, but uh, even there, like if one splits out into the details, uh, X, the commodity side of the core basket, uh, the super core, as we call it, momentum, uh, which was trending around 6% on an annualized basis, and the month of December has actually come down to around uh, four, four and a half uh, percent on our uh, estimates, but it's just one month. Uh, so per se on inflation, yes, headline coming down is good, uh, but core is still sticky. Having said that, I think from a forward looking perspective, uh, the signals do suggest that there should be uh, faster disinflation uh, in FI24. Uh, because uh, even within the core uh, inflation, 
the core services part of the basket actually are showing faster disinflation. It's really the core goods part of the basket, uh, which is still sticky. Uh, and given the moderation in commodity prices, uh, notwithstanding China reopening, uh, plus the negative growth we are seeing on the export sector, uh, the moderation in industrial production side, so the goods side of the economy uh, is slowing down alongside a moderation in input cost uh, pressure. So I think forward-looking the indicators do suggest that goods part of coal will also uh, moderate. So I think uh, it is less of an issue for sure uh, compared to back in December. Uh, the details are more mixed, uh, but the forward-looking indicators are also positive. Okay, but you know what, Sonal, there are two views on this. There are people who still worry that uh, core is not going to come down. I'll debate that a little later and get other people's views. But let me get the chairman's views. Uh, chairman, as always, you've focused on growth in the past. Now, as the others have pointed out, there are enough growth breakers already coming in in terms of the global uh, uh, scenario and global central banks. So do you think this once, the Reserve Bank and the MPC, should pause in aid of growth? Lotha, in any case, I think the growth momentum is going to slow down quite, quite substantially. And I think we are in a situation now, at least uh, the RBI, given that the budget is now unknown, uh, the RBI is in a situation that it doesn't quite know which way to jump. And so if I were the RBI, I would be playing my cards very, very close to the chest because much is going to depend upon how effectively the, the fisc is being, being managed in, in the coming months. But the simple fact of the matter is that the, I think the basic uh, sort of uh, inflationary momentum is, is now significantly weaker than it, it was. And therefore, I think the, the focus can now be, be a little more balanced than it was earlier. Dr. Sen, that looks like you're going to vote for a pause, but we need to take a break. Thereafter, we'll discuss with our MPC members their views on the stance of the Reserve Bank and, of course, take their vote. Back in a jiffy. Welcome back. The members of the CNBC TV18 Citizens Monetary Policy Committee have been debating the issues that uh, will come in front of the Reserve Bank and the MPC. I've been speaking with Chairman Pranab Sen, Samaran Chakrabarti, Shaumi Kanti Ghosh, uh, Sonal Varma and Sajid Chiroy, who are members of our MPC. Gentlemen and Sonal, thank you very much for waiting on. Uh, Sajid, let me prod the core inflation question a little more. Uh, Sonal was pointing out that we are seeing a, a fall in headline and food inflation and core services are falling. But the Reserve Bank seemed very concerned about core inflation. It crept into their statement last time. What are your worries? Do you think we'll persist with 6% levels? But I think the Reserve Bank is rightfully concerned because of the length of time that core has been sticky. It's been sticky now for three years across the business cycle. Uh, creating concerns whether, you know, hardening inflation expectations or the changing industrial structure during the pandemic have pushed the Phillips curve up. Are we, will, do we risk living with higher core inflation for any given level of slack? So I think that's something that they'll have to monitor very closely. I agree with Sonal to the extent that if you looked at the November uh, core number and you, and you went deep into the details, core is becoming slightly uh, less broad, but it's only one month's data. But there are two risks to monitor on the services front. One is housing is a huge part of core services, and we haven't seen uh, the housing index pick up at all. This typically happens with the lag, with the real estate market picking up. I'd be very watchful about how much housing translates into core in months to come. The second risk is even as the global economy is slowing and urban wages will soften. Look at what's happened to rural wages the last few months. Until November, year-on-year -year rural wages had risen to 6.5%, but the momentum three month and three month was above 8%, almost 9%. So even as urban wages may come off, rural wages are going up, which is a good thing for the rural economy, but something that the RBI will have to be very mindful of when thinking about core services going forward. Why does all this matter when the target is headline and all of us believe headline is going to be below 6% for the coming months? Because if you look at a lot of data, what you'll find is when headline and core diverge, if core is get, get stuck above 6% where it is and headline goes down to below 6% to 5%, when headline and core diverge, we've repeatedly found 
it's headline that converges to core 12 months from now and not the other way around. So until the RBI has conviction that core is softening, uh, they need to be very cautious because today's core inflation is your best predictor of where headline will be 12 months from now. Okay, but 12 months from now, we are being told that it's going to be closer to 4.5%. So anyway, uh, we'll have to wait to see what the Reserve Bank thinks about that. Now we have to come to the stance. Uh, Samiran, I'm a little confused over here because the stance is withdrawal of liquidity. There is still some liquidity, you know, uh, surplus liquidity in the system. As well, uh, as Soumya was pointing out, the uh, uh, borrowing program is big. So there are hopes in the market that the Reserve Bank will have to do an OMO. What stance should they take? Uh, so, Lata, the stance is withdrawal of accommodation, not withdrawal of liquidity. Sorry, withdrawal of accommodation. So, uh, and there is a difference. The difference <laughs> is that the withdrawal of accommodation has a rate component and a liquidity component. Uh, so, from a rate perspective, uh, I think RBI is going to stick with uh, an inflation view of a uh, nine, twelve month ahead number, which is maybe five or below. And that, if they hike by twenty five basis point in this policy that would mean a 150 basis point plus of real policy rate, yes. which can be thought of as neutral rate according to us. Uh, but the challenge is that uh, on the other aspect of withdrawal of accommodation, which is the liquidity, the durable liquidity surplus is still uh, two and a half lakh crores, uh, which they might want this number to come down uh, before they can call it neutral. neutral. Uh, so this is the kind of dichotomy or debate that RBI is going to have about whether to change to neutral or not. Mm -hmm. uh, but since all of us in an almost unanimous way uh, discussing about a softer growth outlook and a relatively lower inflation outlook and I'm not getting into the nuances of mm -hmm. it, uh, there is a possibility that RBI will uh, be a little biased towards calling it neutral despite uh, the liquidity surplus being uh, still quite elevated. Okay. Well, I, I'm glad you corrected that it is withdrawal of accommodation. And on the same uh, point, uh, uh, Sonal, you, you're of the view that you are clearly seeing signs of disinflation, even in core. Uh, chances are, even if there is a hike, this is the last hike, uh, uh, you know, uh, from what people are telling me. So why not go neutral? Do you think a stance change is called for? Well, what they do, Lata, is a separate thing. But in terms of what they should do, I do think the stance uh, needs to change, irrespective of how uh, the MPC has guided liquid, uh, the stance with respect to liquidity or rates. Uh, it's time to move to neutral. Now, the argument against that is if you hike and change the stance, then it basically undoes the impact. Uh, but look at what happened with the FOMC this week. I mean, the uh, guidance was still on ongoing increases yet uh, markets uh, did rally. Uh, so I don't think that's actually a very potent uh, argument. Ultimately, it's also credibility of the MPC itself in terms of what they are guiding. Uh, after doing 300 basis point in effective rate hikes from the reverse repo to the uh, repo corridor, after seeing the transmission on deposit and lending rates already, uh, there is uh, you know, all reason for the stance to move to a data dependence. Uh, and now, you know, data dependence doesn't mean necessarily that the next move is going to be a cut after a pause. It is possible if the macro dynamics change, it could also be a hike or a cut. Uh, but I think it's time to now uh, take a pause uh, and take, a, you know, assess the impact of the tightening that has been done so far. So uh, my view is the stance uh, should definitely change. Okay. Well, uh, since you spoke about the changing situation, uh, we are also now in a situation where asset prices have fallen, at least stock market asset prices have fallen. Uh, the governor has been talking about financial stability. Do you think now for financial stability reasons, neutral stance is called for or a pause? Yeah, I think, Lata, that's an important point because the wheel has actually turned full cycle from a situation after the pandemic when the primary concern was financial stability and that was addressed through a lower interest rate regime and liquidity measures. Then the focus turned to inflation because inflation we had to control. Now that we are getting a grip on the control, maybe that wheel has again turned from inflation stability to financial stability to inflation to financial stability. Given this fact, and I think globally, if you see, whenever the central banks are actually uh, slowing down the rate hikes or cutting rates or, or pausing rates, I think they are in a different league. 
because in unison they rate uh, they raise rates but when they uh, withdraw that's a difference so that actually important implications for financial stability also so that could be one of the factor which is also at the which could be at the back of rbi mind okay, and finally very quickly i think in terms of the stance if you ask me yeah. i think what shamiran said in terms of the liquidity we are almost at that level where the rbi wants non inflationary 2.5 trillion but if they stand to neutral now i think that will mean that giving chance of an rate adjustment i think the time has not yet come to give that to the market that we are will not bother about inflation so let's be bothered about inflation but let's be country specific and domestic specific conditions mm -hmm. i wish we can be uh, country specific uh, the uh, you know it's a it's a extremely confusing backdrop and dr sen uh, i want you to put all these things together uh, global central banks a uh, couple of them are still in tightening mode big ones and uh, uh, domestically inflation has fallen but we are very far from 4% we have come to below 6% uh, growth as i as you explained uh, still under uh, uh, a lot of pressure what what's your overall uh, view that the mpc should take you know that the thing is that as far as the mpc is concerned at the moment you know they are in a situation where the uh, conditions of the economy are such that what you are seeing is almost a decided slowdown in terms of growth and a mild trend towards slowdown of inflation but that's still iffy now given that kind of a reality um the question that is going to to plague the rbi i'm not sure how much the mpc will take take it into account uh will be that they may come under pressure for not supporting uh, a revival in growth mm -hmm. and that may happen pretty quickly uh, this this is the worry mm -hmm. it is unquestionable that even with the global central bank easing up on their monetary tightening the global economy is going to slow less so than we had feared earlier but nevertheless this is going to impact us and i don't think the rbi can be in a position where they are unable to respond because they've committed themselves too quickly okay okay they are in a very sticky position as you say sir uh, probably growth is going to slow down but inflation is way away from the 4% mark and perhaps this specific mpc uh, will bear the dubious distinction of having uh, inflation at the targeted 4% for the least number of months so that i don't know whether that will prey on their minds because a couple of the members do seem committed more to growth uh, but let's see how they'll vote we first want to know how our mpc members will vote the first question to all of you will the mpc hike rates on feb 8th and if yes by how much may i start with you samiran uh, so we are calling for a 25 basis point hike uh, in the february policy but this should be the last the hike last for the okay. moment uh, somyo we are calling for a pause in the february policy okay so already divided house sajid one final 25 basis point hike in february okay uh, sonal final 25 uh, hike okay sir uh, uh, mr chevin the uh, hikes are winning where do you vote pause pause okay so it's an actually equally divided house uh, uh, let's see what they do on stance what would the stance be I think the changing to neutral will give them the required flexibility at so this point. So from withdrawal accommodation it changes to neutral. Uh, mm. Somyo not yet time to change the stance. Okay. So persist no change in stance. Sajid persist with the stance so you lose your transmission from previous hikes. Okay. So persist with withdrawal of accommodation. Uh, Sonal Uh, Lata, I, I really don't know. I think uh, the stance needs to change to neutral. But if you're asking me to vote on what they will do, I think they'll uh, retain uh, the existing stance. That's a perfectly divided vote, actually, uh, Doctor Sen. Well, you know, I would go with uh, exactly what Sonal said. Uh, but at the end of the day, I have a feeling they should change to neutral. Okay. And they may change. So, Doctor Sen, you're going with neutral, right? Okay in that case we have a perfectly divided house so we have three people who are opting for staying on uh, who are opting for uh, uh, staying on with withdrawal of accommodation and two persons uh, Samiran and Dr Sen 
voting for a change to neutral. It's going to be a very interesting RBI deliberations uh, at the Monetary Policy Committee. Uh, that will be coming up for you on uh, Feb 8th. Thank you very much for watching the Citizens MPC deliberations.